Hello, Calculus students. Let's answer any questions that you may have on Free Response Question Unit 6, Set A. This is Question 2. Alrighty. Uh, let's see. We are given this figure, and this figure shows the graph of f prime, which is the derivative of a differentiable function f, on the interval from 0 to 7. The areas of the region, so this is the area between f prime and the x-axis is labeled in that figure. The function f is defined for all real numbers and we're given that f of 4 is equal to 10. And we'll use that later on. g is some other function defined by g of x is equal to 5 minus x squared. Okay, uh, let's see. Part a, only a one-point portion of this problem. Find the value of the integral from 0 to 7 of f prime of x dx. We've got space for that right here. The value of the integral from x equals 0 to 7 of f prime of x dx. Remember the value of a definite integral is the area between that curve and the x-axis. The area between, we're going to go all the way from 0 to 7, the area between the curve and the x-axis here is 2. Do you remember an integral accounts for negative areas? So anything under the x-axis is going to have a negative area or a negative value for that integral. Area above is positive. Area above is positive. And what is that? Negative 6. I'm sorry. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. All right, and that was a one little point portion of that problem. Part B takes a little time here. Let's see. Given that f of 4 is equal to 10, write an expression for f of x that involves an integral. Use this expression to find the absolute minimum value and the absolute maximum value for f on that closed interval from 0 to 7. Okay, this should sound familiar. When I hear an absolute max or an absolute min, I think of the extreme value theorem. Absolute max and absolute min on a closed interval. How did we use the extreme value theorem? We checked critical numbers and endpoints. Critical numbers and endpoints to find the absolute max and absolute min. Okay, let me get some scratch paper. Okay, let me jot down a few notes. If we're given that f of 4 is equal to 10, and we remember by the fundamental theorem of calculus, that really the integral from a constant to x of this function will be the antiderivative plus some constant. So if we remember that, that the value of this integral will be the antiderivative of f prime, which is f of x, that implies that f of x will equal whatever the value is from 0 to 4, so that is f of, oh, I'm sorry, f of 4 plus, let's just pick up at 4, 2x of f prime of x dx. Okay, the function value, the area under the curve, will be the function value at 4 plus the remainder from 4 to x. Okay, because then I can use function values here um, when I anti-differentiate. Okay, let me get some space here. Okay, as we said, the absolute min and the absolute max will occur at a critical point. How did we find those critical numbers, those critical points? That's where f prime is equal to 0, or undefined, but I don't see it undefined anywhere there, where f prime of x is equal to 0 or at an endpoint. So that gives me critical numbers of x equals, where is that derivative? This was f prime. Yep. Where is the derivative equal to 0? At 1, 4, and 6. Critical numbers are x equals 1, 4, and 6. Or the endpoints, and those endpoints are at x equals 0 or 7 on this closed interval. You might want to notice that there is no relative math or relative min at x equals 6. Think about why. Look at that graph. There is no relative max or relative min at x equals 6. 
since the derivative does not change signs. It does not change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. Um, that derivative is positive on that interval, so it's, so it's increasing. Alrighty, so there's no relative max or min at x equals 6 since f prime does not change signs. Notes on the grading of this problem. If you test x equals 6, that's fine, but we don't have to test x equals 6. Okay, so now remember that I check, plug in those x values, find my f of x values, and I'm going to test the endpoints, 0, the critical numbers, 1 and 4, and an endpoint of 7, and see what those functions values have to be, and I will reveal my absolute max and absolute min values. Okay? What is f of 0, the function value? I can use this up here. And f of 0 will equal f of 4 plus the integral from 4 to, I'm plugging in x equals 0, so those limits of integration, f prime of x dx, which will be f of 4, that was given to us, f of 4 is 10, the area under the curve up to that point, um, not the area under the curve, the function value, f of 4 is equal to 10, and let's see, plus, I don't like those limits of integration going large to small, so I'm going to change the sign and go from 0 to 4 of f prime of x dx. Okay, now I can use my graph because this will be 10 minus, what is the value of the integral, remember that's going backwards to my function value, antiderivative, and from 0 to 4, area from 0 to 1 is positive, that's 2, negative after that, negative 7, and oopsies, 10 minus, positive above the axis, negative below, that is 10 minus 2 minus 7, which is a negative 5, and I get a value, function value of 15. Okay, let's find f of 1, which is f of 4, which is 10, plus the integral, let's see, from 4, now x is 1, to 1, f prime of x dx, which is equal to 10 Again, I don't like the limits of integration. I'm going to change that, which changes the sign from 1 to 4, f prime of x dx, okay, which is 10 minus, what is the value of the integral from 1 to 4? From 1 to 4, that's a negative 7, so minus a negative 7, which is 17. All righty. What is f? of 4, f of 4, oh, that was given to us, f of 4 is equal to 10, and what is f of 7? f of 7 is, doo -doo -doo, go back to my function, f of 4, which is 10, plus the integral from f of 4, which is 10, plus the integral from 4 to 7, f prime of x dx, which is 10, plus what is the integral value of the integral from 4 to 7? 4 to 7, which is a positive 3 and a positive 1. So plus 3 plus 1, which is 14. Alrighty. So I've got all of those function values that occur at the critical numbers or the endpoints, and now I can find that max or min. This looks like the absolute minimum value. This looks like the absolute maximum value. Okay, let's take a moment and summarize that. Okay, and I will state this cleanly. So on the interval between 0 and 7, the absolute minimum value is f of 4 equals 10. That's the value. And the absolute maximum value is f of 1, which is equal to 17. Let's see. You could also say the max minimum value is 10, which occurs at x equals 4, and the absolute minimum value is 17, which occurs at x equals 1. I'm just trying to state things cleanly. You earned four points for this portion. One point is earned for a function to calculate those values. Another point is finding 
those test values. Again, with or without six, that's okay. And then you earned two points for the absolute max and the absolute min with supporting work. Alrighty, take a moment and refresh your memory on part C. Okay, part C asks us to find the, evaluate the indefinite integral, g of x dx. There's no limits of integration. Well, remember I'm given a function, g of x, so that's the integral of 5 minus x squared dx. When I evaluate an indefinite integral, that is simply the antiderivative. So I take the antiderivative of 5 and I get 5x. Take the antiderivative minus x squared will be minus 1 third x cubed plus c. And that's it. That is the indefinite integral when I anti-differentiate. This is a one-point problem. And you get earn one point for that value, but you need that c in there. Okay, so that's one point. Part B was four points. Part C was one point. And part D is three points in this problem. Alrighty. Let's look at D. Find the value of the definite integral from 1 to 2 of x times f prime of g of x dx. Okay, so I'm asked to evaluate this definite integral. Remember what g of x is. That's the integral from 1 to 2 of x times f prime g of x, which was 5 minus x squared dx. All right, now I need to anti-differentiate that thing inside. Ugh, this is messy because of that inner function. Ah, so I'm going to use a little u substitution. I'm going to let u equal that messy thing inside, 5 minus x squared, because then when I take the derivative, du is equal to that 5 is gone, negative 2x times dx. Now I can substitute for this. I'm going to rewrite everything in terms of u. x times dx, let me get that by itself. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And I get negative 1 half du is equal to x dx. Okay, now I can make a substitution. This becomes, yeah, okay. All right, this becomes the integral. Oopsies. I am going to substitute x dx is negative one-half du, so I really want to take out that negative one-half right away, integral, uh, x dx, which is now du, f prime of, substituting in, 5 minus x squared, which was u. The reason I left off those uh, limits of integration, remember I have to convert them. These are in terms of x. But now these new limits of integration will be in terms of u. All right, if u is equal to 5 minus x squared, u is equal to 5 minus, that upper limit for x was 2 squared, so 5 minus 4, which is 1. And this lower limit, now in terms of u, will be 5 minus x squared. That lower limit was 1 squared, 5 minus 1, which is 4. I'm really not a big fan of that because my limits of integration go from large to small. I'm going to switch them, but that changes the sign. That's 1 half the integral from 1 to 4, f prime of u du. Ha, huh, but I know what the value of this integral is. Let me go back to my graph. It's from 1 to 4, and this is a graph of f prime. From 1 to 4, the value of that integral is, ne is negative 7. So this becomes 1 half times negative 7, which is negative 7 halves. Ha! Huh. In this three-point portion of a problem, you got one point for a correct u substitution. You earned one point for rewriting your integral in terms of u, and you got one point for the correct answer. Thanks for watching. Take care.